Following the Zimbabwe election result, returning President Emerson Mnangagwa to power and calls by the opposition coalition for citizens change for fresh elections, the ANC Secretary General Fikile Mbalula, who was in Harare in talks with his ZANU-PF counterpart, said international observers have no mandate to cause the invalidation of the polls, but whatever they would have raised would be used to perfect future elections. Let's talk now to renowned Zimbabwean academic and commentator Professor Ibo Mandaza about the state of democracy in his country and the O.I. Tambo School of Leadership lecture, which we understand he was due to deliver, reflect on the recent elections. Professor, good evening to you and welcome. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. We understand you were invited to give the public lecture at the Ara Tambo School of Leadership. I, I believe it was to go ahead tomorrow. Can you confirm that it is not going ahead? Yes, it has been cancelled or more correctly postponed um, after the intervention of Mr. Mbalula and following an agreement between myself and David Masondo of the school, uh, I felt that uh, given that the OR school leadership is um, an organ of the ANC, I uh, felt that David and his colleagues had to follow the, what was officially a directive, and I didn't want to embarrass them in any way by try to insist the lecture goes ahead. To the lecture which was organized uh, many weeks ago, uh, two weeks ago to be exact, uh, apropos pro the Zimbabwe elections. But of course, I've been working with the OR School of Leadership for many, many years um, as an intellectual, as a trainer, uh, during many of these uh, sessions. And I, of course, I know David Masondo very well, as I do many other ANC people that I've known from exile days. Mm. Uh, as you know, we have, we're engaged with the liberation movements as part of the liberation movement myself. So we're very familiar with much of the work of the ANC and the other former liberation movements, the PAC, uh, ZAPRO, BCM, and long before the likes of Malula came on the political scene. So we don't want to to uh, undermine the leadership of the school by my son and his team. And we felt this matter can be postponed. It remains on the agenda because of both the, in the circumstances surrounding the, the, uh, the ban or the intervention by Mbalula, but also because the lecture itself is important as a, as a as a, as a f focal point for discussion, particularly on the way forward in Zimbabwe. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and, Prof yeah. Mandaza, if, if you allow me to come in there, uh, there's a lot in what you have just said. There's a level of cordiality and collegiateness that you want to maintain with the school because there's institutional work that is ongoing. Um, and what has happened now, you use the word a banner. What did you make of that? And the substantive reasons given um, in, in, you know, f from the SG of the ANC uh, requesting that this happen, that this do, does not go ahead? Well, I don't know. I think the letter went viral. Um, I don't know how, but I understand twofold. One is that the, there was a presumption, a misplaced presumption, I must say, by Mbalula that my lecture would perhaps dig into the background of the elections in Zimbabwe, uh, and that that might embarrass the ANC itself, uh, and of course, its, its discussions with with Arari was significantly the the letter from Balula uh, was written while while, while it was in Arari. He only left Arari today, and there was a strange coincidence between that letter. And, uh, and, and a tweet, anonymous tweet, which was threatening me personally uh, that the a patriotic act would be leveled against me, kind of cheap threat. But uh, that's one. The second is that uh, the import of the letter is to suggest that we, if and when it's held again, the lecture is held, it must follow a certain format. Um, I thought it was a ridiculous kind of suggestion. That yeah. academia must be told by non-academics like Balula how to conduct ourselves. I thought it was 
almost uh, is, uh, is too good actually for me say so. Mm. So I, I, I didn't quite catch the last part, but you know, this this behaviour, um, judging from what, what I heard you say, uh, then would almost seem you know petulant or petty. Yeah, petty, but uh, dangerous. You know? Petty but dangerous, because it uh, it is a, a serious intervention in academia, in intellectual freedom, uh, freedom of expression. One may say so. Unprecedented. The, the event was taking place at uh, at this university, where most of visiting professor, um, uh, uh, and uh, you know, I'm also on the Human Science Research Council of South Africa. Uh, and indeed, I have been involved with academia across the region, and including South Africa. I regard myself very much a part of the South African academic community. Mm. So from Balula to do what he did shows one ignorance about my own work, ignorance about my own political position, and the fact that we have been engaged in this bubble problem for a long time. And we, we believe that South Africa is central to it. In, uh, in that nothing can move forward without South Africa. And therefore, we think that, when we hope that through this debacle, people like Mbalula will become more informed, one, about the Zimbabwean situation, about geopolitics, uh, and the history of SADC, some of which of us, yeah. some of us have been involved with SADC since 1980. And indeed, more important, the fact that the SADC protocols governing what should be done if there's a dispute, we have a dispute relation in Zimbabwe. And people like Nangagwa himself and many of his senior politicians know very much what this means. When there's a dispute, there is a big, big problem. And SADC has to confront it along with South Africa. Okay. So it is not something we have quite soon. We, we have to prepare for that. And that's why we have pushed out a petition which more or less anticipates what is possible uh, in the discussion with the SADC. There's three options. SADC, one is to ignore, is, is to ignore the elections and say, look, these are I wonder the bridge and the, the nothing can be done about them. The second is that they, they, they could order a rerun. Yeah. And thirdly, which is the option, I think they do mention the, the option of a transitional authority. Okay. Uh, the sort of um, which we invented is is contained in the SADC protocols. And I'm not sure that Mr. Mbalula understands that. And certainly, he may be misinformed by his equally ignorant people in Harare. But this is a position. Uh, yeah. It's a negative report, not only by SADC, but the, all the observer missions. Right. And there's Pro no way... What Prof, I'm so sorry to, to interject you there. We are very definitely out of time, but thank you so much um, for sharing your perspective um, with us. I, I would have also wanted to ask whether it was a warranted concern that what you would have said would have had a negative talk, a negative effect on talks between both governing bodies. But if time allows in, in a future interview, perhaps this is an angle that we can explore with you. But thank you for sharing what you have with us tonight. Zimbabwean academic professor Ibo Mandaza.